Ready to kick this off? Do it. All right, let's go. Boom. Okay, Greg. Episode three of Images, right? Some I, I got some great feedback from guys on episodes one and two on the Im- on our image series. So thank you very much. Um, we'll probably do some some follow up on I I had one from the last episode, one follow up email. Um, apparently, last episode I said that uh, J- progressive JPEGs were new. They aren't new. They've been around for a very 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 long time. They just haven't been very popular. Um, so I did say that they were new, kind of saying they were new to the community, uh, cause not many people talk about them. Um, so yes, progressive JPEGs, they have been around for many, many years. Um, so apparently are around 10, 15 years they've been around. Um, and actually all browsers, current browsers support them. I actually didn't even think that I didn't think that was actually the case. Um, I, I had read some other articles that said that they weren't so, uh, but I did look it up. And all browsers currently support progressive JPEG and have for quite a while. So uh, we're good to go on the progressive JPEG front. Um, if you want to jump nice. on that bandwagon. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for clarifying that. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> how's your week been, so bud? We're, so we're talking. I jumped straight into business. Like I, I didn't even do any small talk. Like how's your week been? I know. Ah, pretty good. Busy, busy. I'm exhausted. Nursing nursing uh some illnesses in the house so you know trying to trying to stay above water you know kids bringing illnesses home right every every which way yeah it's (laughs) uh first week of daycare and just wait till kindergarten oh is it they grad the the kids don't just graduate but the viruses graduate too (laughs) exactly exactly and then when you have multiple kids you get the kid gets the one kid sick and then like it's like a never-ending thing you know during oh, some parts great. of the year, it's it's just wonderful. Great. How about you? How was your week? You know, I've been killing it this week. To be to be honest, like I, I set up my goals. You know what things I wanted to do at the beginning of the week, which is kind of a new thing. Like I actually wrote down what I wanted to do this week, and um, and I kind of got I got the last thing done. Well, it's almost done. I'll finish it tonight, definitely. And um, I had one like my dream of maybe doing something this week on it and um i got all day tomorrow to work on it so i'm i'm good i'm looking great Hmm, nice wrap up the week wrap up the uh, week pretty strong then yeah yep yeah nice do you do you handwrite them or do you use a uh to do task management i have a to-do manager um call i use omnifocus um but okay Mm -hmm. i'll be brutally honest and my omnifocus is just like a pit of things that I've added in there that I need to do. Um, so what I've done is I've been using day one, the, you know, the journaling app. Yeah. And yeah. what I did, what I did was, so I've only been doing this for two weeks, but it's kind of working, right? So on Monday, I, I, I wrote just, I created a, an entry for this week's goals. And then uh, what I did is at the end of every day, or actually I've been, I've been doing it as the day, as the day goes along, like whatever I do, I'll, I'll, you know, just do a bullet list of things that I did today. And then, um, I'll take us, if it's something kind of visual, I'll screenshot it and throw the image in there as well. So that, uh, you know, when Friday rolls along, I can kind of look at my week and go, Oh yeah, look, I really did do something cool this week, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. and I think the images actually help a lot as well because you can kind of see it, you know, it's not just a bullet list of stuff. Like I can see screenshots of, you know, um, some new settings that I've done or designed a new button or, you know, I, I designed a new color picker, you know, this week and finalize that. So I took a screenshot of that and just threw it in there. Right. So just having a visual representation of kind of what I've done this week has been really, really good. Interesting. I, I've switched between OmniFocus and things, but I can never really stick with it. You know what yeah. I end up doing? Is I end up handwriting it. Mm. So I'll take a notebook mm-hmm. and I'll bullet everything on my mind and everything I have to do. Yeah. And then write notes for the day and as I do work and everything. Um, you know, I might I might check put a check mark if I finish it. And then the next day I start over and write the same thing mm-hmm. over. Again, so all the tasks I have to do that and yep. 
just kind of manage it like that and just keep going. I always write on only one side of the page because my engineering background is always like, don't write on the back and always write on one side. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I just keep going back to that. I just can't get away from pen and paper. Yeah. Cool. So, you know, I was, we're, we're kind of getting way off the topic of images right now, but it's okay. So I wanted a few weeks ago, my son to maybe start using some task management to help him figure out homework in terms of what homework to do and when, and, you know, if he has a project doing, you know, next week, you know, make sure it's in his to-do list. So he knows exactly what he needs to work on. Um, not sure how well that's working yet, but what I did is I, I looked at OmniFocus and at first I was like, man, this is a lot for like just a simple task manager. Right. Um, so I looked at things and things looked really nice, especially the new version. Right. I was like, oh, wow, this would really fit well. The UI is nice. Right. It's simple. Um, but then I noticed it was, you know, 50 bucks and, you know, I'd have to get the iOS app too. Cause he, you know, and, um, he uses the iPad a lot, uh, for school. Um, his school uses iPads. They don't uh, think he has like one textbook. The rest is all on his iPad. Um, so he uses the iPad a lot. So I, I would need a Mac and the iOS version. It was like, you know, it was going to be like, you know, 75 or hundred bucks or whatever it was. And I was just like, well, let, let, let me stick out with OmniFocus. And what I tried to do is I, I removed a ton of features from the app. Like I, I cleaned up, I removed everything from the toolbar and only added like the one or two buttons that he needed. Um, and I really cleaned up and minified the interface. So it was very simple and I think it's working out. Um, and I think I'm going to try to do that for myself as well. Um, where, you know, I just, I remove a ton of the features and, you know, some of the, the distracting parts of the app and really just customize it for what I need. And, uh, I don't know. Um, so yeah, hmm. it's interesting. Yep. You kind of, you, you, you slim down the pro app to more of a streamlined. Yes. Yes. But what's nice. I mean, OmniFocus, I like how it does, like you can defer dates. You can have deferred dates. So like the task won't ever show up until the particular date. Right. Um, yep. and you know, a lot of task managers don't do that sort of stuff. And I like OmniFocus for that, but, um, yeah, slimming it down to where it looked like it was a simpler, you know, uh, app with less features. Uh, but I could still use some of the power features that when I needed to, uh, it is interesting. So, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I might have to uh, switch back, try OmniFocus again, because it's definitely nice having having a digital, you know, yep. screenshots or putting mm -hmm. in putting in snippets of code or something like that and attaching that would be yeah. would be helpful. But I don't know. I, I, nothing has worked as well over the years as pen and paper, so I have a feeling I'm going to end up back on pen and paper. But you know, I'll keep I'll keep trying it out yeah. until I find something that works. Yep. Yep. I mean, the, you know, you know, the most important thing is that you stick with it, right? Yeah. So that's that's the hardest part. Cool. So today, guys, let's let's get back to business. Uh, this is going to be part three. I think it's going to be the final one on images. Um, we we wanted so. to do, talk a little bit more um that about some stuff we didn't cover in the past two episodes, and uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about seo and images and how you know seo has to apply to images and what you need to do to make sure that all your images are found by search engines and how it could help you out for your rankings and all that jazz so yeah. um greg why don't, why don't you go first awesome. what's what's your first topic file names let's talk file names okay so google is definitely getting better right we have lots of machine learning now. It's a big topic in AI, right? So, and the pattern recognition, they have, you have recapture, recapture, which now lets you click on, on the items in the images. So, you know, clearly Google knows what's going on inside these images now and they're getting better at it. But the first thing to start with is file names. You know, you want to give Google as much signals as possible. And that's really what SEO is about, as many signals and hints um, as possible. So, Name your files, you know, keep them descriptive. Don't make them too long. Um, I know you, I know you have a tool for SEO, right, Joe? Or um, It's SEO helper, which it's more meta tag stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Well, I do have um, shameless self plug. I do have SURX, which will give you guidelines and look at all the images on your page and make suggestions on name lengths, which I believe off the top of my head is, um, I want to say 20 characters 
or something like that, around 20 characters for image names. And, um, you know, you hyphen, hyphen to separate the words and keep, you know, so you have, um, you know, dog chases car, right? So you have dog dash chases dash car. Mm -hmm. And, and you try to keep the more prevalent keywords in there. So you keep stop words away, which is just generic, like transitional words, Mm -hmm. like the, or, um, you know, words that don't add context to, to what's in the image. So that's my first topic. Well, <laughs> and you know, the important and think, thing is... That, oops, sorry, go ahead. I, I was going to say, the important thing is, you know, if you add an image directly to Stacks, it gives it a default name. Mm-hmm. So make sure you double-click on that image in Stacks and edit your file name. That is a good point. Um, so, yeah, we did talk about there's two ways to add images, right? Um, if you add a image to the content area, so you drag and drop it into there, you know, you double click and we, we talked about, you know, you can edit some information about that image. And one of those things is definitely the file name, right? So um, Stacks does give it, you know, Stacks underscore something. I You know, I don't remember the exact uh, naming standard, but yes, good, very good point where you can actually customize the name of the image there. Now, if you add an image to the settings, like if you're using a stack that, you know, the image is dropped into the settings, you cannot change the, uh, the name of that file. Um, that is not customizable yes. right now. Um, so, yes, just to let you know, if you are wondering about that, um, that is not possible. Um, so, yeah. And if you, and if you warehouse them, you can give them any name you want. Exactly. If you warehouse it, give it any name you want. Um, some things with naming, I do want to say... Um, I'm I'm not a fan of having spaces in names um, in general, like with no. anything on the web. So um, if you want to delineate, like, you know, specify different words, um, I use dashes. Um, a lot of people say dashes yeah. are underscores. I think dashes are better. Um, they they definitely, a lot of times underscores can be um, misinterpreted as maybe a space or people don't see them, right? So you use a dash. Um, so if you want to say, you know, my fancy product or you know, pro- we'll leave my out right because greg just you know said you want to leave all those um pronouns stop words stop words uh, okay this, they're they're referred to as stop I, words I, i'm thinking of what like the official link you know i i did horrible in english class in school i don't remember what those are called but anyway yeah, things I like didn't. my the a stuff like that leave those out you just want basically the keywords right so what is that image um you know and use dashes instead of spaces um, do you have a preference? I don't think it really matters caps or mixed case. Um, I tend to go all lowercase, uh, for again, for anything on the web. Um, I just use all lowercase for almost anything. I, I use all lowercase and dashes for everything. Mm-hmm. And me too. I, I, sh- I shouldn't, I should note, um, SURX actually looks at a bunch of common stop words in these names and, and your alt tags that we'll probably get into shortly. Ah, cool. Um, yeah, it, it checks, it checks for all that. Sweet. Um, and I'll give you, I'll give you a link for the show notes for a list of stop words that you can share with everybody. Cool. Sweet. So what do you want to talk about next, next up? Images? Obviously alt tag is, I think the next thing, right? Um, because while the file name does, you could give it a clue on what the image is, right? The, the alt tag is where you can actually define really what the image out is and you can describe the image. Um, so obviously the alt tag is kind of like a description that isn't really displayed anywhere. Um, it's just purely informative for the search engines to know what is inside that image so that you can describe it. Um, and a lot of times you're going to want to put stuff in the alt tag that people would, if you want people to find your images, right. You want to put stuff that people would potentially search Google for, um, and you want that image to result, right? So um, you know, make sure you, you stuff a lot of keywords, probably don't, again, like Greg said, a lot of those stop words, probably, you could probably leave those out as well inside, um, the alt tag. I don't know what, what's, what's your feedback on alt tags in terms of what sort of words or wording that you need. Alt tags, I, sh- I should bring up, <laughs> I did so much research on this when I built SCRX, I should really bring this up and have all my rules like right in front of me. Um, and we really prepared for this episode. It. I know, I know. Um, 100, 100, 140 to 150 characters for oh, the really alt tags. Oh, really? That much? Yeah, you can oh, actually. Okay. This is where actually you put. This is where you put your meat 
Oh, okay. Yeah, for your for your images. Um, I have so, to admit, I've I've always done a lot less than that. Like I do like two or three words. And so so good. I'm getting schooled. School yeah. me some more, Greg. <laughs> Uh, you give me a second and I will. Okay. Um, <laughs> All right. other, th- other things, uh, while Greg's looking up that I, I, I recently discovered some really clever, um, tactics for, um, a lot of this is actually used for email. Okay. Um, but you could use this on the web as well. And that is when an image doesn't download. Okay. Um, either because, um, a lot of times, you know, email clients, especially, uh, will, you know, not download an image. Um, if the particular, um, you know, if it thinks it's spam or something like that, right. The email, the email client won't download the images in the email. So what you can actually do is, um, there is some CSS that you can throw on the page that will target the alt text and then style it. So you can actually cause, um, inside like the broken image, you can actually style the alt text so that it it displays something, right? Um, Hmm. it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Um, I I just learned about it. I don't know about a month ago and was like, oh, that's cool. I'm going to, I'm probably add that feature to the email stacks. So, um, so if you're an email stacks user, um, look forward to that feature, uh, pretty soon. And, uh, yeah, I thought that was really cool. And I actually, I, I heard, (laughs) um, I was listening to a podcast and the guy that was using this, uh, tactic, what he was doing is he'd put like some, cause it's just an email. It's not really for search engines he would put like some sort of catchy phrase that would make someone turn on images so, that, so just so they could see the image. Right. And uh, so he'd put like some funky and maybe like even an emoji. I think he said emojis would even work. So um, he put an emoji in the alt tag with some information that, you know, it was basically like kind of clickbaity. So it made the person want to enable images so they could see everything. Um, and another that's reason cool. he'd do that for emails is because a lot of times that's how, um, analytics for emails work is whether or not an image was downloaded, right? So, uh, that, that's one reason why he wanted people to d- be able to download images so he can b- get better analytics on open rates, uh, for his emails. So, uh, by adding some sort of clickbaity message into the alt tag of the image and then styling it so that, p- you know, people would see it, you know, they'd enable images to see, to see it. And, uh, you know, he'd get better analytics on his emails. So interesting little tidbit of information there. Yeah, that's cool. So I, unfortunately, I can't find the length. Oh, here we go. Yep. Um, yeah, less than 150 characters for the alt tag. So under 150. So I misspoke earlier. Okay. So, but still, 150 characters. That's a lot. I mean, that you know that that's yeah. that's you know a, a sentence or two uh, that you could do yep, exactly. for an entire image. So you know that's definitely something. Yeah. I do have to admit, I don't, I don't do that. Right. I, I don't. I don't I don't go through all my images and make sure that all the alt tags are are pristine and um yeah. Well the the other important thing you should do is they all have to be unique, right? No duplicate alt tags on a page. So Yeah. You know, I know I know you do short brief alt tags, but there's only so many times you can say dog and park if you have multiple dogs. And, <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so try try to do a little bit more, a little more effort than the bare minimum sometimes. Yep. So next up, title tags. Um, sure. Yeah. Do people still use title right. tags? Well, that's what the tool tips are. Oh, the images, yeah, okay. right? Yeah. Well, I, I, I yeah. didn't know really, really that was, I mean, I, I knew it existed. So when you hover over the image, you know, you get a little, uh, you know, the browser specific tooltip tag. Um, but yeah, yeah. Okay. Do, do search yeah, engines really look at the title tag as well as the alt tag? Yeah, as, again, more signals, the better, right? Fair enough. Fair enough. And I'm pretty, and you know, don't quote me on this and cause I haven't looked at it recently, but I'm, last time I checked, I think for um, accessibility, I mm-hmm. believe the title tag is used for like screen readers and stuff. Like oh, that. you know what? That makes sense. Um, that, that makes complete sense. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have to, we'll have to double check that in the show notes, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Um, and the guidelines for title tag is less than 75. So less than half your alt tag. So, you know, that's, that's oh, so t- title 75 for. you said. Yes. Okay. Yep. yep. So for SEO, you definitely want it and it has to be less than 75. <laughs> Interesting. 
Yeah. I'm basically walking through SCR because it's source code here and <laughs> <laughs> going through all the guidelines as we as we talk, which is okay. It's fine. Yep. Um, all right. So you're next, up. What do you want to talk about next? next? Up, um, you know, I I know we kind of beat this dead horse a couple times, but file size I have to say is probably another big one, right? Um, if you have an image that isn't properly optimized, um, you know, search engines aren't going to index it favorably. So, um, you know. At, one of the biggest things you could do for SEO um, outside the technical area is page speed, I think, right? And um, mm-hmm. page, you know, one of the biggest things you could do for page speed is to reduce your images and make them as small as possible. So uh, I'm not going to go into all the tirad of what you could do. Listen to the first two episodes if you haven't already and uh, learn how you can better optimize your images. But that definitely has impact on SEO. Uh, in terms of file size of your images. Yes, I agree. That's a good one. I usually come up with those. <laughs> 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 it's usually, usually my uh, my sticking point, you know? Yeah. Uh, so images, what else for images? Mm, that's a good question. We talked about title, alt, sizes. I don't know if there's much left for images. Emails, we could talk about just briefly email sizes. Um, do you have any guidelines on email sizes for images? Um, so, okay, sizing on email is, so that's that's a good question. So sadly in the email world, um, we have to play to the lowest common denominator, right? And sadly that is Outlook, which means a lot of you know responsive image stuff that we could do like retina image stuff is is somewhat out the door sadly um because things like you know a simple attribute like max width just isn't possible in outlook outlook does not support max width at all and that sucks um so basically what outlook does is if you throw a thousand pixel image out there Outlook wants to size it at a thousand pixels, right? Um, it's kind of ridiculous. And uh, yeah, um, so without, with email, um, essentially, I, I strongly recommend that you, you know, put the image size that you really want, right? And um, I, when I've been doing emails, I've been doing it around 600 pixels. So um, on on mobile devices, almost all mobile mail clients nowadays will will respond and shrink the image down. So we're kind of good good there. And then um, at 600 pixels wide, it'll you know it'll look good on pretty much all desktop email clients. You know you don't need to. Responsive email is not the same as a responsive web page, right? I mean it's 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 kind of like building it's kind of like building two static width. <laughs> uh you know things like right? you you have mobile and then you have you know the desktop size but really even on desktop size i don't recommend going like to a thousand pixels like it just it's going to make your life worse um i'm serious and you know i think 600 pixels is just a good width it's what almost all major email um you know marketing campaigns are done at um so yeah i that's just my recommendations on um image sizes uh for email Make them the size that you need, and um, I personally don't go over six hundred pixels. Cool. I do have two more tips. Okay. For images. Sure. The Apple Touch icon. I know it's not directly related to images, but okay. in Rapid Weaver, ah. you add that Apple Touch icon for your site. So if people bookmark your your site to mm-hmm. your phone, that's the icon that gets showed up on gets shown on. The user's home screen. Yes. So, uh, and not only yeah. there, but uh, Apple started using that actually in Safari. Like if you bookmark a page or add it to your favorites in your bookmarks, like that is the icon that's now used. Like if you click on the browser toolbar now in a new tab, like open up a new tab, um, yeah. it, it shows, you know, all your, your favorite bookmarks and whatnot. And that's the icon used. So that's a good point. Yeah. Um, you know, if we want to talk about other images, there's also like the pin browser tab stuff, right? Which, um, I, I know uh, Firefox has that now and Safari does. Um, I 
Does Chrome do pin tabs? I don't. I don't know. I don't use Chrome that much. I don't know. So I honestly, don't know. But anyway, uh, you know, it 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 is kind of a funky format. Like it it is kind of a really a two toned um you know thing. I recommend uh you know if you want to do that, there is a um there's a site. Oh shoot, icon. Um shoot what's there there is a website where basically you can upload an image and it will generate not only all the sized icons that you need but uh the actual meta tags that you need to load in all of those particular um icons on your page and then you could just chuck that into your um your page header um inside the the global uh, code in your rap weaver project and you're good to go um i i will make sure i look that up and put the url in the um in the show notes um Oh, that's going to drive me nuts. It's icon something. Uh, something like that. Something like, I think I, it's like a favorite car generator or something yes, like that. Yes. Fate, fate. Yeah. Fate. Yeah. Fave. Yeah, it's probably my history. Favomatic or something. I don't know. There's a Here bunch. It is. There's a bunch. Real of fave icon generator dot net. <laughs> it's a long name, but it is good. It's, it's a quality one. <laughs> Um, it really is. And it'll actually generate the, um, these pin tabbed icons, um, for you. Uh, even if you upload like a PNG to it, it'll generate, uh, because the, these are supposed to be like vector graphics or whatnot, but they're really tiny and they're, they're, you know, two toned. Um, so yeah, check that out. Real fave icon generator dot net. It really is good. It's pretty awesome. Sweet. Sweet. Yeah. The other, the other thing I was just gonna mention was the fave icon, but now that we're talking, um, uh... I think that's pretty much covers all your images on your page that you could possibly put. Yeah. Um, do you have anything else, Joe? Um, no, I, I don't think so. I think, I think we have, we have conquered, um, email or an email images. Yeah, e- <laughs> images. Long week. It's almost the end of the week. You know, we got one more day. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I guess one thing, so, one thing we can quickly mention is I know gifts are like the thing now, right? Like, you know, animated gifts and whatnot. Um, so, you know, we didn't really touch, touch base upon that in the, these couple, uh, episodes. So, um, what are your thoughts on animated gifts versus video? I like it a lot better as long as you could press them. Yeah. I've seen a lot of users embed 10 20 megabyte mpegs onto their website and they wonder why their website takes a minute to load Mm -hmm. you know i i I mentioned this before in previous episodes but you know you you gotta think about if you want to talk lowest common denominator talk about talk about me at my house on a 3g connection and then (laughs) you know we have very little cell service and trying to load your website if it's going to take if i have to load a 20 meg if I have to load a 20 meg video, you're going to eat up my data connection and it's going to, I'm probably not going to buy something from your store. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, think about, think about that, us poor, poor souls with very little cell service. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, on the flip side, you do have to, if you're making gifts, you know, I've seen like six megabyte gifts files as well. Right. So yeah, um, compress def- them. yeah, make sure that you, you compress those enough. And you know, there are times when, if you compress it too much, like sometimes a video is depending on what you're trying to convey, a, a small video file could potentially compress nicer than a GIF would. Um, it's dep- it all depends on the thing. So uh, that you're trying to yeah, accomplish. Click. So um, yeah, I can't really give any hardcore, um, you know, recommendations on, you know, you know, black and white do this, you know, use GIF when this use MPEG four when that um, it's just, you're going to have to test it out. If you can't get the GIF looking good, um, you know, it, while it's compressed and it's too large, you may want to look at a video file. It could, it could actually potentially be smaller, um, as an MP4. It really just depends on, um, the content that's within the, the video. Right. Right. Cause, um, you know, if you're doing like a background yeah. or something like that, where the quality doesn't really matter too much, Yep. you know, that it's, it's perfect. Right. Yeah. Yeah, one but, thing, you know, you know yeah, one thing, and that's a great point. Um, a lot of times, if you, if you, if you're using an image as a background and 
I, especially if you have a, like a, a transparent overlay on top of it, like you can get away with having like compressing the crap out of that image or the video. Like you, you can have a much lower res image or video if it's behind a transparent overlay and you will never notice the difference because that transparent overlay really just obscures your vision of it and you don't notice any degradation and the file size could be a fraction of what you would use if you didn't have the overlay on top of it. Yeah, so that, very that's true. a great trick. Very true. Yeah, very true. Yep. Um, and I, oh, another thing, um, one more thing with images is social media sharing. So like open graph and Twitter cards and all that jazz. So like, um, this is getting a little bit more into SEO stuff, but you know, there is definitely an, an OG image tag. Um, and there you, you're going to give a URL to the, to a, probably a JPEG that is going to be whenever someone shares your image or a URL to your page on Twitter or Facebook or whatever, right? Um, it's going to have that nice image showing up there. And that's all done through open graph tags. Um, you know, Greg mentioned my SEO helper stack. Um, my SEO helper stack that I do have um, that ships with foundation does uh, help you do all of those open graph meta tags. Um, and I know that uh, Real Mac's working on some of that stuff for um, a future version that I may or may not have on my desktop. <laughs> How's that for a leak? <laughs> Oh, Greg oh, shaking his head. Greg shaking his head. <laughs> oh, Joe. Dan, Dan, you can slap my hand later. Uh huh. Sure. <laughs> um. Yeah. No. Yeah. I think your SEO tool is great, and you know this wasn't meant to be. I didn't, you know I didn't even think about talking about SEORX, but you know SEORX helps with all these things we talked about today. Definitely. And helps helps you report and get insight into what's going on in your page and catches you know catches all all those things mm -hmm. before you publish you know yeah. right in the right in preview mode it doesn't publish anything to the to your web server so it's adds no weight to your page and lets you yep. know what's going on get you a better idea you know as soon as you hit publish so you're not starting from zero sweet I think, I think that's the best oh, part of it there, there is there is one more thing that I've actually never played into it's it's been on my thing to look into is you know, you, we have sitemap XML files, right? Well, apparently yep. you can, there's a special one that you could do just for images. So you, you can create like a sitemap yes. XML file of your images so that Google and other search engines can e more easily, uh, you know, source all the images on your um, website. What do you think about those? Do you know anything about that? I haven't, I don't, I just know it exists. I came across it when we were searching a while back, doing research for some of our previous episodes. Mm-hmm. My understanding is that it's largely for single page applications and those kind of things where the content's dynamically loaded and not mm -hmm. available in the DOM. Ah, okay. So, you know, that's that's kind of how I view it and how I kind of see it. I think it's interesting and and uh, might be fun, but I think it might be limited benefit for Rap Weaver users if unless they're their entire page content is, you know, loaded asynchronously and not available Got for it. mixing. Got it. it. It could just serve as a, um, if you want to manually do this, obviously there isn't any tools out there that will do it for you to my knowledge. Um, but you know, it could, if you want to take the time to research the syntax and build the file out yourself, could just give you a little leg up in terms of Google finding your stuff faster. Um, just an idea. Yeah, it could. <laughs> In theory, in theory, I guess, theory, yeah. More, yeah. more, you know, the more, again, more signals, the better, right? Yep. And that's like, that's kind of like the rat race, right? The more signals and, you know, the more little crumbs you give, the better Google can get at, you know, making you number on the first page, which is kind of like the goal of everybody is getting on the first page. Cool. But, Sweet. Yeah, this is just the beginning. Well, you got anything else to add about images? I, th I think we've covered yeah. everything in the past three episodes on images that I could think of, uh, at least for right now. Yeah, no, I think it's been great. I think users have seen seem like they're pretty, pretty excited and, and loving it. So yes. I think we hit the nail on the head with these. Sweet. So Greg, tell everyone where we can find your beautiful mug. <laughs> Figuratively, 
<laughs> hey, I, I, I have one of your mugs. Oh, I know. That's I was, why I was I thinking was, about it. When I was you said drinking that. it out of it this morning. Oh, man. I have a whole box in my garage. My wife has been telling me to get rid of it for four years now. Oh, yeah? <laughs> or so. Yeah. <laughs> They're collector's <laughs> items now. Yeah, maybe I should eBay them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rapid Weaver eBay.com. Uh, for context, I had my previous company name before I changed it to Chili Dog, Java Bean, Java Bean Hosting, and Java Bean Software. I had the logo printed on a mug and sent it out to uh, a lot of friends and, and uh, clients. So I sent them all over the world, all over the world. And I just have a whole stash left over. <laughs> <laughs> and the nice thing about the mugs is that they're extra tall because I drink a lot of coffee. I they are. I do like it. that cup. It's extra big. I like it. <laughs> well, I'm glad you like it. And if, uh, you know. Send send a self addressed stamp box and I'll send you another one. <laughs> Sweet, I interrupted you. Where can we find you on the interwebs, Greg? Chili Dog Software, Chili Dog Hosting, and at Barshard on Twitter. Sweet, and everybody, I am at Joe Workman everywhere: Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Feel free to connect with me. I'm mostly on Twitter, um, so that is where I converse. Basically, that's where all my social media sparks from. Um, and, uh, if you in, are enjoying this show, make sure that you leave us a review on iTunes, uh, check out all of our past shows on weaverradio.com. Um, and, uh, thank you very much. We will see you guys next week. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Joe. Talk to you later.